Hi, this is Alan from MockDive and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk about something that has to do with your internet connection called the proxy fire. Now you're probably asking, hey, Alan, what is a proxy fire? Well, basically this application on your Windows machine or actually even Android phones, but for today, we're just going to talk about it on our Windows machine. It allows you to basically have a proxy application to connect you into a proxy server. That will be the middleman between your internet connection and wherever you're trying to connect to. Basically adds a layer of security and it allows you to bypass other websites that require you to be on a different location or a different server. So why don't I hop onto my computer right here and show you exactly what's the application about and how you can use it. All right, so now we are on my desktop. If I go to proxyfire.com, we can be on the Proxyfire application website. From here, you can download it. So it is available on Windows, Mac, and Android. But for today, we're gonna to talk about it in our machine again, which is Windows. So there are two ways of downloading this program. The one which is an installer and the one which is the portable version. Now, since I don't wanna install anything right for this video, I'm just gonna download the portable version. It should be the same. But the main difference is that if you download the installer, of course, you're going to get the .exe for the installing of the application. But for the portable version, you don't have to install anything here. Let me show you. I'm just going to download it. After downloading that, I'm going to receive a zip file over to my desktop and I can just extract it. And then boom, I got the application right now. This is the application and this is what you're going to get. Foxifier EE for portable edition. Now we can open up the application and we can run the proxyfire.exe. Let's run that and as you can see there is a 31 days free trial. So we're just going to click on continue evaluation. From pressing that, this is going to be your main window. Now, what's in it? What can we do for this and how does it work? Well, here, let me show you. The thing is you would need some free proxies. Yep, there are two types of proxies. One that you pay for, which is much safer, by the way. It's not a public one, it's a private one. And it's your own personal proxy that you can use with whatever. Doesn't matter. Your load is the only load on that network. But for free proxies, you have to fight for those proxies and hope that it is not being used by millions of people. Here, let me show you. I'll go back to my web browser here. I'm going to hop on to freeproxy-list.net. These are some free proxies that you can use with Proxyfier. For me, I just want to search for Singapore because that's one of the countries that's closest to mine. And I found my free proxy right here. This is the IP address that I'm going to be connecting to as my middleman. And this is going to be the port that I'm going to be connecting to once again, connected for that IP. Now we can also talk about paid proxy here. If I go to proxy-seller.com, another trusted website, you can just choose your service. Like, what is it? IPv6, ISP proxies. Let's do IPv6. Let's do a selection of maybe another one for Singapore. And then let's just do a uh, normal 12 months. And I just want like the, or I just need one IP. How, to, how much does that cost? The 169, so around $9 USD. We don't want that. We just want to use a free one for this video, but this is of course dependent on what you want to do. So here, I'm going to hop onto my proxy fire once again. What I'm going to do is add a proxy server. To do that, I can just click on file, view profile, press yes. And then we can do profile, proxy servers, and we can click on add. On add, we add the address and the port. So I'm going to be getting one right here, which is the Singapore protocol would be Fox version 5. And cool, we don't have to do anything about that. I'm just going to press OK. Do you want Proxyfire to use this proxy by default? You can change this later. Let's just do yes for now. And then we're going to press OK again. And then we're going to press OK once again. There you go. We got one of our applications using the network right now. And from there, as you can see, one of the applications are already using the proxy. Uh, this one is called Windscribe. And as you can see, there are a lot of errors because the connection keeps on requesting timeout. That means that. There are a lot of people using this proxy that I'm using right now for this tutorial video. 
But since it's just for tutorial and just to show you that everything's working, that'll be fine for me. But once again, I would highly suggest buying one of your own personal proxies. Now, Alan, how can we add applications and why does Winscribe your application keeps using the network? Well, Winscribe is actually a VPN that I've been trying out personally. And of course, it'll kind of in a way interfere with this proxy. From Winscribe, it hops onto the default proxy, the rule that we have added, which is the Singapore one, Docs 5. Cool, everything's working fine. Internet's still working fine. And as you can see, I'll show you right here, I hop onto YouTube, refresh the page, still loads, which is nice. And now how do we add a program? Well, we go here back to the profile, proxification rules. And as you can see, we can change this. We can block the local host whatsoever, but we can also add applications that can use it directly. We can do add, we can name it, let's say Apex Legends, which is a game. And then we can click on applications. What we can do here is click on browse. So though I'm currently on Apex Legends, I want to use, you know, the R5 Apex right here. That application is now part of the proxification rule. We go here again, click on proxy Sox 5, press OK. And now Apex Legends is now good as well. But since we have this action on direct from the local host, so whatever programs really want to use the proxy, we'll just get to use them anyway, because I didn't block it. As you can see right here, Steam is now trying to access the proxy and going through the proxy, the Galaxy client going through the proxy, and even the Epic Games Launcher is going through the proxy. That's basically it. Everything's working fine now. We got our proxies working. So now, these networks or these programs, whenever you're trying to access the internet, they're going to access it through the proxy. So I'm from the Philippines and let's say my ISP is of course going to be from the Philippines. I added the proxy of Singapore servers. So basically now the internet thinks that I am from Singapore. But with that said, I'm going to exit out of this. What is the main difference between proxy fire and a VPN? Well, actually, the main difference would be VPNs allow you to have different IPs every time that you reconnect to them. But with this one, you just get a stock, maybe personal or public proxy server, then that's going to be your IP all the time. And of course, VPNs has a lot more different features, but proxy fires are also useful for specific things, such as specific networks, specific IPs, specific gateways that you want to connect to. But that is it for me for this video. Again, this is Alan from Hawkdive. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next Hawkdive video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe and have a nice day.